In case anyone was wondering, tonight I'm sampling Corsair Brown Ale. It is an English brown ale from a brewery in Quebec. So today I'm going to be tinkering with and experimenting with these Wee Nunchuck controllers. These two I got quite some time ago at a thrift store for a buck each. Um, I'm pretty confident that these are both knockoffs or aftermarkets or whatever. That one says Intertech on it. This one says absolutely nothing except for the usual warnings. So, um, the reason that I grabbed these was that I know, oh, originally I grabbed them just because they've got some neat little sensors and things in them. And then I spotted these little breakout boards on eBay which meet with the connector. There's two pins on top and three on the bottom, but only four of them actually do anything. And that matches with that, just like that. So, um, with only four pins, and they're actually labeled on here, minus plus DC. Uh, so voltage, data, and clock. So that should be pretty straightforward to uh, to interface with, and I've already done a little bit of looking, and I know that there is an Arduino library or two out there for this thing. But before I get to that, this has screws in it. Obviously, we're we're destined to take it apart and just see what all is in there. You wouldn't expect anything else of me, would you? Well, it seems to come apart just kind of clamshelly. Where's a spudger here? Yeah. So we got a top, two little sides, circuit board, a few wires. What are there? Five wires in there. One of them's obviously ground. And yeah, we knew that there's five wires down there. Okay. Uh, cap. Ah. That looks quite similar to the little joystick modules that you can commonly find on eBay. This kind of little modules. Well, the shaft's a little bit different. That one's got a narrower shaft on it than that one. I wonder if they're all like that. These, these ones have different potentiometers. No, these ones all have a more sturdy plastic shaft on them. Yeah. So, oh, does this one click? It does. Okay. But they are all pretty much the same internally. Um, you've got two potentiometers, this one on the side here for measuring that way, this one for measuring that way, and then there's a little clicky button. You can see it better on here. Right there. So, five volt. It's a ground, uh, X, Y, and switch. So that's probably pretty similar on this one. Let's go deeper. So two buttons on the front there, which are on this little board here. And then, oh, hello. There's some brain boxing going on down there. Wasn't expecting all that. So there's two crystals on here. That one's a 16 meg and that one's a 4 meg. There's quite the little um, mess of resistors there. What the hell are those guys doing? Oh, and there's another little chip hiding underneath them too. Okay. So those are going to two different pads. So, hmm, that looks pretty bodged, doesn't it? So, and it's hiding a chip under it, labeled U4. Then there's this main chip here. 5851LQFP48. No idea. And of course, no idea what that thing is and under that little blob there. So basically, we seem to have a microcontroller, um, something, a couple of crystals, Another mystery chip under there. And another mystery bob chip on this side. 
So whatever's going on, they don't really want us to know. Oh, we got a capacitor, a few other decoupling capacitors. Oh, whatever. So that wasn't entirely informative, but I guess one of the things that we, well, a couple of things that we do know about it or can infer about it is that there is an accelerometer in there and there is some kind of a microcontroller. I tried to look up that part number and of course there's nothing anywhere that I could find. Okay, so that goes back together fairly straightforward, I think. Not that it matters that much because I've got two of them and they were dirt cheap. So I think what I'm going to do is try and dig up a library and some sample code and see if I can play with this. Well, this looks promising. It says you need a level shifter, but I've found other projects that say you don't. And this thing does run on 3.3 volts. I'm going to try it without just for the hell of it. Um, it uses I2C, which we saw earlier in the data and clock and sort of suspected that. So that makes it pretty straightforward and easy to work with. So you just connect it to the SCL and SDA. It, it doesn't get much simpler than that. And I noticed that up earlier he was talking about using level shifter, but down here he's not actually using one. So whatever. And then there's this library. This library here on this GitHub. I'll put a link down below if uh, anybody wants to play with it. And it comes with a demo sketch, which is the same one that's in that uh, article. So this one, you need uh, processing in order to talk to it and uh, get it to display its data. I don't have that and I don't feel like setting it up, but I don't have to because he's broken out what all the functions that the library provides are. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and go ahead and uh, get it to read all of those. And uh, I shall be back shortly. Alrighty, here is that chunk of code that I've modified a little bit. Um, it's created a serial begin, and then I've taken all of those functions from that uh, web page and just told it to serial print them so that we can take a look at them. Nice and easy. Let's throw that onto uh, some kind of an Arduino board and hook it up and see what happens. So here we have um, all the different columns. Um, the Z button here. The C button. And then for each of the joystick uh, X and Y, there's two different numbers. There's a raw number here and then there's a uh, kind of a filtered or processed number here. Same for Y. So if I crank the joystick to the left, we see the Y change. Actually, no. We see the X change, don't we? Sure. X, X raw and X change drastically. Crank it to the right. That maxes it out. Up, there are the Y changes. And down, the Y changes again. Now then there's this angle one here. It is doing some weird math on all on both axes of the joystick and coming up with a number. I'll show you that in a little bit more friendly way later. Um, and anyway, here is the accelerator or the accelerometer again. Uh, raw in X and processed in X, raw in Y and processed in Y and Z. So if I Twist my wrist around, see that changing, and tilt it, and what are these three directions here? There's that, oh, there's that, and then there's this. It's got to be an easier way to see this. Let's try the serial plotter, although it's showing a whole bunch of different things. So let me just do the accelerometer stuff again. Here's tilting it up. See that changing and tilting it down. It's rotating it, rolling it to the right, back to center and to the left and center. And then it's rotating it this way. It doesn't seem to do as much. Anyway, here's the joystick moving around. You see that and the buttons. 
I'm just going to take some of those parameters out so that we can see this a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now all I have showing is the joystick X uh, and X raw, Y and Y raw, and the angle, which is calculated out of that. Um, the documentation that I found says that it's done in radians. So here we go. This is just the joystick. So if I go left, center, right, center, up, center, down, center. So that should be pretty easy to work with, you'd think. Let me just uh, swap this out again and just put the accelerometer stuff in here. And I think I'll just put the raw accelerometer data in. X raw, Y raw, and Z raw, nothing else. I'm trying to hold this as steady as I can right now. So if I do that, hmm, I twist it a little bit. Let me go back to neutral again. So that looks like that one is changing the red one. And if I twist my wrist this way, that's the blue one. And so I guess... How do I make that one go? So that's the red one, definitely. Oh, it's this way. Okay, let me stabilize again here. No, that's the blue. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, they all do something, obviously. Um, this is a little bit twitchy for me to interpret. So that's definitely that direction. And that's definitely that direction. So just for fun, I uh, found this other uh, other little project that also uses the, uh, the nunchuck. This one's controlling servos, which is kind of cool. More background about this. This guy claims that it can that the uh, nunchuck can uh, be connected to five volts. I'm still leaving mine connected at a 3.3. It seems to be working fine. This thing doesn't even use a nunchuck library. It just uses wire.h, which is the I2C library and the servo library, which is kind of slick. And here is the code that it came that this uh, little web page came with. I'll link to that article too, but here's where it came from originally. Now then I didn't write this and I haven't reverse engineered it too much. Okay, so there is all the stuff on the serial monitor. I can't remember what the... Well, that's just a count. Okay, that's the joystick and the accelerometer and the buttons. So again, we'll push the buttons. Yeah, that works. Move the joystick around. Swivel it, swivel it around for the accelerometer. Sure. Okay. Interesting. Whatever. But let's look at what's happening in the real world. So if you remember, the two servos were mapped to the joystick. That could come in handy. For driving some kind of a vehicle or a robot or something. Well... I'm sure there is more that can be done with these, but that... Well, I mean... Now that we know how to read it, especially from the previous sketch, because I could read using that library, which makes more sense to me, because I can get numbers off any of the functions that this thing provides. So I should be able to make it do, make it control pretty much anything, right? That becomes the question. What do I want to control with these? Hmm. I don't know. Um... It'll probably show up again and again when I just need a simple control. I, mean, I could use these joysticks too, but this is such a nice little ergonomic little package. And two fire buttons. Even if I don't use the accelerometers, because they they seem a little twitchy. Um, I don't know. Uh, would I want to be waving my hand around to make, uh, make things happen? A joystick seems more intuitive to me. I don't know. Uh, anyway... Do you have any ideas what I should do with this? They're just fun. I think I'll look out in the in the thrift stores for more of these things, especially if I can find them for a buck. 
assuming thrift stores have survived the, you know, uh, plague. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, comments and questions and suggestions down below in the comments section, as always. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.